talk about Texas a little bit. Let me, let me, let me just kind of talk for the next few minutes, okay? I've, I've been mulling over this phrase for the last couple of weeks. God bless Texas. God bless Texas. God bless Texas. When I mean, you say that enough times throughout the course of your adult life, if you're not careful, you can start to lose a little bit of the feeling behind it. See, one of the things that I'm believing right now is that Texas is the last bastion of freedom and authority that can actually get America back on track. You see, we talk about the great subset, or we talk about American exceptionalism, but I believe the great subset of American exceptionalism is and has been for 176 years Texan exceptionalism. Mm -hmm. We're both state and republic. We are the wind of change when change is needed and when the principles that form the backbone of our great country need protecting from the capricious whims of a power-hungry, uncivil society on the move, we are the steadfast rock here in Texas, which the nation can secure its anchor. We stand at the forefront of every good bit of the light that the United States of America can shine forth to the world, and we bear the broadest shoulders against all that would seek to put out that light forever. There's a Texas way of walking, a Texas way of talking. There's a Texas way of living, Texas way of, of thinking. We can even chew gum in Texan, folks. Our politics and our public persona are of a complementary nature to one another, and you can take our sir and our ma'am and our thank you and our please and our darling and our dear when you pry them from our cold, dead hands. But do not mistake that civil thread and southern hospitality Hospitality for anything less than the calm of reason before the storm of decision and leadership. Here in the place that lies directly between sea and shining sea, where the sunlight lands most brightly on the forge of industry, and where the well of the blood and treasure that flows out to our nation does not run dry. Here in Texas, we take our place beneath the mantle of leadership, beneath the star of our flag and the stars of our creator, and we, lo we live our honor from the time we draw first breath until the time we go to meet him in the life beyond. We're pro-business and we're pro-life. We're anti-regulation and anti-marching in a backwards direction. You don't get to be the ninth largest economy in the world by slouching. And in Texas, I assure you, our posture is straight and proud and we stand tall beneath our cowboy hats and above the fruits of our hard work. The sweat of our brow is alchemized. The steel of our reserve is galvanized and we do not lightly step to the job at hand, no matter what that job may be. Now, the evolution of a Texas state of mind begins on a mother's knee where we are taught to serve our God, our state, and our country, and most generally in that order. And it ends in an easy demeanor, demeanor that we wear as comfortably as a well-loved pair of boots. The look of a Texan is a surface-level portrait of a deeply developed soul. The songs are all true, the legends are all gospel, and I believe Pecos Bill still rides that cyclone across the rain-thrashed prairie, and that yellow rose still breaks hearts to a man whenever we think of her. This is how it's been. This is how it must remain. Texas was born to lead, not to follow. It was born to be the vanguard and the cause of freedom, and not the rear guard with the heels nipped at by tyranny. As Sam Houston once said, Texas has yet to learn submission to any oppression come from what source it may. And truer words were perhaps never spoken. America needs Texas to be what we are because America looks to us to lead. And if you seek to destroy America to remove her foundations and watch her crumble into the dust, you need look no further than the fall of Texas. It cannot and it must never happen. And it will never happen as long as men and women of the character for which we are so famous continue to put our shoulders to the wheel.